This video is for all my fantasy writers out there because we're talking world building and five tips on how to wow your readers. What's up guys, Michael Oran here with Author Level Up, helping you write world-class stories better and faster. And I make these videos because I believe that each of you has an inner J.K. Rowling inside and you just need help unlocking it. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell, ding, 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 to get notifications every time I have a new video. And you know guys, this is gonna be a special video because this is a first on Author Level Up. I have a guest. <laughs> so the author Jason Link reached out to me and Jason is an author, he is a public speaker, and he's got a best-selling course on Udemy on world building. And he asked, hey Michael, I would love to get in front of your audience and talk about world building because I know this stuff really well. And I said, yeah, that's great because I actually don't have <laughs> very many world building videos on this channel. In fact, this is probably the first one. So um, Jason is gonna be talking about five tips on how to wow your characters and create better worlds. So without further ado, take it away, Jason. Think about your favorite fantasy story. My guess is one of the reasons why you like that story so much is that the author created a world you wanted to get lost in. As a fantasy writer, you want to do the same thing. You want to create a world that enchants your readers. You want to create a world that they want to get lost in. So there is no formula for conjuring up wonder. But there are a few guidelines you can follow to help create a world that will enchant your readers, a world your readers will want to get lost in. Guideline number one, put yourself into your world. When it comes to writing, the truth is you won't be able to please everyone. And that's great news. You are free to be yourself. In world building and fantasy writing, you might feel tempted to go with what is popular, to try and meet everybody else's expectations, to try and be good enough for others, but don't fall into that temptation. One, you're taking yourself out of the equation, and two, you're trading your creativity for a mold. You can't please everyone and that's great news. You are free to be yourself. So when building a world, put yourself into it. Guideline number two, use what you find compelling. This kind of feeds off the first point, but I believe it needs to be emphasized. If you can't find your world compelling, how do you expect your readers to find it compelling? Awe and wonder can be contagious. People are more likely to be intrigued by your world if you yourself are intrigued by it. Guideline number three, look to the world around you. Now, you might think, I live in some obscure place that nobody cares about, but the truth is there is something interesting about where you live. Poet Rainier Maria Rilke once said, if you can't find poetry in the world around you, then you're not poet enough to be writing poetry or something like that. The point is, you can find something amazing about the world in which you live, the neighborhood or the community where you live. When I was living in Nicaragua, there was this festival and a holiday that isn't found anywhere else in the world. And I thought, I'm gonna use that in my story. So there are things about where you live, things that are unique to the place where you live, things that you might not even know that they're unique. You are intimately connected to the culture around you. And if you can tap into that intimate connection, your writing will come across as more authentic and your readers will feel that in your writing. And that will make your world more compelling. So don't be afraid to use the world around you as inspiration in your world building. Guideline number four, create a world of depth. You wanna create a world for your story where people feel that there's always more to learn. Think about our world. Our world has an infinite amount of depth. You can go into the depths of history. You can zoom in to the microscopic or you can zoom out to the cosmos. There are caves, there are jungles, there's the depths of the ocean that are yet to be discovered, that are yet to be explored. So our world has an incredible amount of depth and you wanna create that same experience for your readers. When people are reading your story, you want to give them the impression that they are only seeing a snapshot of your world. They're only seeing a little sliver of it. That if they were to go beyond the pages of the story, they would see a bigger world and an ever expanding world. This is what makes a world compelling. You feel that there is always more to learn. So create a world of depth if you want your world to be compelling. Guideline number five, stretch the bounds of your creativity. When you're world building and writing fantasy, 
the first ideas you come up with might not be the most original. They might be cliche. So when thinking about ideas, when coming up with ideas and sifting through your ideas, I kind of compare it to shopping for produce. As you may know, grocers have a strategy when placing their vegetables in the vegetable aisles. If they kept on putting their fresh vegetables on top of the old vegetables, then those old vegetables would get moldy and bad and just gross. So what they do instead is that they take the old vegetables on and put them on top and put the fresh vegetables on the bottom. So what you have to do if you want to get to the fresh vegetables is you have to reach to the bottom or you have to go to the back of the pile. The same thing applies with ideas. Reaching for what's on top, what's easily available, isn't always the most fresh idea. Sometimes we have to reach deeper inside our imaginations to grab the fresher ideas. And just as fresh tomatoes taste better than old tomatoes, fresh ideas sometimes taste better than old ideas. So when building your fantasy world for your story, stretch your creativity. Take the effort to reach for those fresher ideas. All right, everybody, those were five guidelines to help you create a world that will enchant your readers, a world they'll want to get lost in. If there are any tricks or tips that you use, feel free to put them in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them. I hope you all found that video helpful. I want to thank Jason again, and be sure to show him some love in the comments with your favorite world building tip, and also check out the links that I've put in the video description to show him some more love because he's dropped two links for us. The first is a link to his free world building template to help you build better worlds with your next fantasy book, and also a link to his best selling course on world building on Udemy. So with that, I hope you guys have a great week, happy writing, and I'll talk to you in the next video.